Hi, I'm Aaron Bazic, Emergency Manager for the City of Valdez. The recent Valdez Glacier separation event on July 7th and 8th of this year has prompted the City of Valdez to caution recreationists. This unprecedented event commands a sense of awe and amazement as we witness the massive movement of ice from the face of the glacier. The natural response is to want to see it firsthand. Responsible recreationists know that dangerous hazards do exist in glacial waterways. Seasoned guides and experienced outdoor enthusiasts have a lot to share on the subject. I'm going to spend some time on the water with Caden Adler from Anadir Adventures and Zach Sheldon from Alaska Guide Company. These two guides spend more time on the lake than anyone else out here. They have agreed to impart some of their experience and knowledge on recent history of the glacier, including its current state and some of the potential hazards. There are definitely some things you should know before you go. The last three to five years, the receding here at Valdez Glacier has accelerated and the glacier that we're familiar with has changed. What's been happening is there's about two miles the last few years that's been floating in the lake and pieces are breaking off the front. We're also losing about 20 feet a year off the surface of the glacier. And what's happening is that we're losing all this weight and leverage off the face and the buoyancy is pushing up on the face of the glacier and a crevasse that's been forming at the back where it starts floating. And on July 7th, that buoyancy won the fight. That whole section, that crevasse, broke free. Everything busted into the thousands of icebergs that you see behind us. So a couple of potential threats and hazards in areas much like the one behind myself here. While this inlet may look inviting and wide and safe enough to travel through, a couple of things to point out that are possibilities in this area. First one being underwater calving. We may experience while these things are bumping into each other, big blocks of ice popping up from below the surface at any given time. We also can experience some of these cracks and fissures that we're seeing in this ice may open and calve off from the above the surface. Features like this one here, attempting to pull your boat out and walk around on the iceberg and even climb in, around, and on this. Last year I saw an iceberg the size of this just split in half and roll without warning. You don't want to be on this when that thing shifts and that can fall or you're just trapped under or on top of and the iceberg rolls over and takes you with it. You don't want to be walking around that stuff. So here you can see a really good example of the ice and the bobbing effect in the water. You can see it puts off a little bit of a wave, but this is a much smaller scale example of what is possible out here with some of the larger icebergs and pieces that were strewn about the lake. I have seen just recently, even close to the shoreline, a larger piece of ice about the size of a large van flip over entirely on its own as that center of mass changed and it needed to roll. And this generated quite a bit of waves breaking up the surrounding ice. So distance from ice is your ally. So here behind us, we've got this really enticing looking iceberg and cave feature. And if you were to end up on a situation where you're walking around an iceberg or a piece of ice and you end up on top of a thinning roof on something like this, you may end up on a roof that can't support your body weight, leading you to become the next thing in the water. Channels such as this one behind me, whether they occur between two icebergs or at the face of the glacier, represent significant hazards. It's a channel much like this one that caused the triple fatalities on July 30th of 2019. Three recreationists traveling in an inflatable canoe paddled inside of the channel. While in the channel, above and underwater calving occurred. It was catastrophic and it cost them their life. So with pieces like this one here, this is a very recent break off the glacier. 
You can tell because it still has some of that bluer color to this ice. And blue means new. The bluer the ice, the more recently it's broken off of the glacier or off of another iceberg. If you see that blue ice, that means that ice is quite unstable until it has time to really settle and find its center balance point. The whiter it is, the longer it's been out there in that same position, the longer it's been exposed to the surface to begin that melting process. So this is a really recent piece and also a bottom berg most likely. We're seeing that golf ball dimple texture in this ice. So that would have been something that came out from below the surface of the water and shot up to the surface as it broke off the face. So right here on this iceberg, we're noticing off of the perimeter is about 15, 20 feet out from what you see is the edge and about five, 10 feet out from the visible edge back there. Um, there's bubbles coming up and what's happening is there's ice further out than what you can see and the air is coming out from under the iceberg and coming up along the perimeter here. And so that means as a sign that this iceberg is shifting in some manner. So if you're seeing lots of constant bubbles, you want to stay clear of that area. So here we've got a big congestion of blue new ice. It may look very inviting to go and explore, but it is a place with many hazards. One being a lot of unstable ice, lots of blocks that are separate and ready to roll and move around in that area. Also, the issue with that congested area becoming more and more tightly packed with ice after you've entered what looked like an open area. So pieces like this one here, we run the risk of above surface calving. You can see that this crack running through this piece of ice shows that there's not a whole lot on the surface connecting some of these bigger blocks together. So these pieces are susceptible to breaking off into the water and generating quite a large wave as well. So really minimizing your exposure time can help mitigate some of that risk. We don't wanna stay very long in areas that appear to be visually quite risky as well. So we're gonna keep moving along here. Yeah, so what appears to be the face of the glacier currently is actually a bunch of floating pieces of ice. The face of the glacier itself actually sits roughly three quarters of a mile further up this valley where you can see this glacier starts to make that right hand turn. So this is all broken up during that July 7th event and what we have is essentially a lot of jumbled up icebergs that are free floating that are simply just wedged into this valley that are holding them in place. But really any day we could see this flush of the rest of these pieces of ice flowing out to the lake. Also looking up in this valley, you can see a lot of this kind of scree and bare rock exposed on this valley wall sides. So as this glacier retreats into the valley and exposes some of those new shorelines, you're gonna see a lot more areas that are susceptible to these rock slides and also poses a threat to people as they encroach upon those areas and able to access them via watercraft. And losing your watercraft out here with the water being as cold as it is, is not an ideal scenario. As the guides have just explained, while exploring the Valdez Glacier, it's vital to understand glacial behavior and to know the hazards. Recreating with an experienced paddler who has recent time on the water is helpful as well. To avoid unnecessary risks when enjoying this beautiful location, know before you go.